Tech fans, glad to see you guys back here on the channel once again. I'm Elric, your host. Now, you guys all saw the unboxing of the MSI Twin Frozer Gaming Edition R9280X just the other day. And I know all you guys really care about is the score. So I just want to say right off the bat, forget all the bullshit. In Minesweeper, this thing got like 9,680,000 million frames per second. Just screwing with you. Let's jump in. Let's check out the specs and the full review of this card. Let's go. Today's video is made possible by Squarespace. All right, folks, so everyone pretty much knows that the new R9 280X is a rebranded 7970 gigahertz card, although that's not really a bad thing, which we'll get into later. Now, this card comes to market with 2048 stream processors. It's got a core clock of 1050 megahertz, which is unlike the standard one that comes at one gigahertz. Also comes with three gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, 384-bit memory interface, and pretty much all the other specs I'll have appear on the screen behind me, but it's essentially all the same as a 7970 gigahertz edition card. What we basically had to do in the beginning of testing is we had to change the BIOS and change the driver, and then it actually read as that card. In our initial testing, it actually showed as a 7970. Now, some of the things that make this card stand out though are the twin frozer cooling. The twin frozer cooling allows for better overclocking of the card and gives the card a lot more flexibility in things you're doing. Since it's gonna be running cooler, you're going to be able to do a lot more with it. And as far as their overclocking goes, you actually get three different options to choose from. In the MSI gaming app, which actually comes with the card, you get three profiles. The overclocking mode, which runs at overclock settings. The gaming mode, which bumps down the core clock side for optimal performance and cooling. And silent mode, which bumps the core clock down even further, allowing for silent and extremely cool performance. Those are some of the really excellent things about the card as far as their own features go. Now, everybody knows that Afterburner software software is the software that they include in all their MSI cards, and many people use this on various cards. Afterburner software allows you to check out all the stuff that's going on, optimize it, change it around on the fly, so those people out there who like to do all their custom overclock and everything, you can do it from inside the Windows environment with Afterburner software. Now, as far as the power connectors go, you need a single six pin and a single eight pin power connector. It's 250 watts of TDP for the card. I would recommend using at least a 600 watt power supply if you wanna get really stable performance. You might be able to get it to run with other ones that are a little bit less power, but you wanna make sure that you have some kind of space in there so that you don't stress out your system at all by having not enough power. Now, you might be able to get it to boot with a 450 watt power supply, but that power supply will be strained and will run for a much shorter time than if you have Amazon power to boost that damn thing. Another really cool thing about the MSI Twin Frozer Gaming Edition R9-280X is its dual BIOS feature. This means that you can set one BIOS for extreme overclocking and one BIOS for normal usage. Then you can switch between the two and if you burn one out, you can switch it back to one and reflash the other one to get back to your original factory settings. Now, the rear I.O. of this MSI Twin Frozer is exactly the same as the very first reference edition 7970 cards that we saw. It has a single DVI connector, a single HDMI, and two main DisplayPort adapters. And inside the box, it comes with the main DisplayPort to standard DisplayPort cable in case you only have that type of cable. Now, with that said, let's rock out with our sock out to the benchmark song.
All right, folks, that is The Human Zoo, written by myself and the Tech of Tomorrow crew. If you guys want to check that out, you can check that out over at www.techoftomorrowmusic.com. We launched this site using Squarespace.com, which is probably the quickest and easiest way to set up your own website. Squarespace has 20 templates to choose from to start you off and is constantly improving their platform with new features and designs. It doesn't matter if you're on your desktop, tablet, or smartphone. Everything is optimized to look good automatically. If you're on any issues along the way, don't worry. You can take advantage of their 24 hour a day, seven day a week tech support team who are ready to help you get your site up and running. Pricing starts at just $8 a month with a free domain if you sign up for a year. And to make things even sweeter for you, our lovely Tech of Tomorrow fans, you guys can receive 10% off along with a free trial upon signing up by using our discount code TOT10 at the checkout. So if you enjoy the content we put up and have been looking to create your own website, you can help support the show and get a killer deal on a killer service at the same time. The link is down below in the description. Check it out. Now, as far as the performance scores go, you guys can see that it's kicking butt on the GTX 760 and holding pretty much neck and neck with the GTX 770, a card that's actually $100 more than this card. Now, like I said before, this is a rebranded card, but some of the great things about this card is you can actually use it in Crossfire with a 7970. You no longer actually need to have a Crossfire cable to get it to work. And as far as single monitor performance, all of the micro stuttering issues have been fixed. So those are all really good things, right? Plus, they've slashed the price down. This card is only $299, that's right. So you get an aftermarket card from MSI with all their superior cooling, all their great software, and all that stuff for under the $300 price mark. That's pretty damn good. This card's gonna compete very well with NVIDIA right now, and as the holiday season unfolds, you're gonna see the people at AMD offer more and more deals, more and more gaming packs, and just completely try to dominate this industry. Now, you guys know that right now, AMD has all of the console market completely locked and tucked underneath their belt. They've left NVIDIA completely out in the cold, and they're saying that by doing this, they're gonna be able to work a lot better with gaming companies in the future to bring us a lot better gaming performance and results. So that means games should not only look better, they should run better. So at the end of the day, I gotta say, for the price point, all the cooling, the overclocking, I mean, this thing only ran at 66 degrees Celsius under full load. So that's running pretty cool compared to some of the early generation cards that when they were overclocked were just burning up. So you get a card that's under $300, runs great, runs cool, overclocks like a madman. Hey, it's the Nitter's Choice here on Tech of Tomorrow. Let me hear your guys' opinions down below. All the information about this card plus the full written review will be down there in the description down below that like button, which I know you guys are going to kung fu kick. And beyond that, I'm Alec. We'll see you back here on Tech of Tomorrow. We've got more cards coming and we'll have more reviews for you folks here on Tech of Tomorrow.